for the Supplemental Instruction Series of Videos for Chemistry 121. And today I'll be talking about a few smaller subjects that have to do with gases and gas laws and such. So first I'll be talking about the different, kind, different units of pressure. You may know, of course know about the atmosphere, the ATM, but often you'll find that pressure is measured in different units. One might be the millimeter of mercury, or MMHD, or also known as the Tor. Now, one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. And then, of course, there's another pressure you might be familiar with from everyday life if you've ever had to inflate a tire or whatever, and that's the PSI, pound per square inch. And one atmosphere is equal to 14.7 PSI. Now sometimes you may have problems where you have to convert your units of pressure into atmospheres. You might, you might have millimeters of mercury or PSI and you need to convert to atmospheres for say an ideal gas equation. And so we can go over that. So say we had let's say uh, 500 millimeters of mercury. And you want to know how many atmospheres that is. Well, essentially what we have here is a conversion rate, so you'd approach it like you would with any other conversion problem. Start with the value given, and then here you're going to want to put what you're looking for on top, in this case the atmosphere, the one atmosphere, and then what you're trying to cancel out on bottom, the millimeters of mercury. Then millimeters of mercury cancel out, and you just get atmosphere. I'll do a calculation real quick. Five by seven sixty. So that gives us point six six. That's the general idea behind converting pressures. It's just like any other conversion rate, really, which makes it easy to remember. So, our next concept is STP. Now, STP stands for Standard Temperature and Pressure, and standard temperature being 273 kelvins, or zero degrees Celsius, and standard pressure being one atmosphere. Now, why do you need to know this? Well, sometimes you'll get a problem like this. Like, find the volume of a gas at STP. It's good to know these values because then you know what your pressure and what your uh, temperature is so that you'll be able to plug those values in for whatever problem you need to deal with. The last concept we're going to be talking about is Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, or just Partial Pressures. Now this one's a pretty simple concept to understand. You say you have a mixture of gases in a container, and they each exert a certain amount of pressure. You want to find the total pressure. Well, the total pressure is just equal to the sum of the individual pressures of each gas. Conversely, if you want to find the partial pressure of one gas, if you knew the total pressure and the pressures of the other gases, you could just subtract the other gases from the total pressure, and then you'd just be left with the partial pressure you're concerned with. And so that's basically all that you need to know about these three small, smaller topics. And so it would be a good idea to get out and practice with them, because you'll definitely be encountering them in your homework, tests, whatever. Hello, I'm Kevin Martin for the Supplemental Instruction Series of Videos for Chemistry 121. And today we're going to be practicing with an ideal gas law problem. So, a gas at 500 kelvins with a pressure of 2.4 atmospheres fills a 7 liter container. How many moles of gas are in the container? Okay, so as you may recall, the formula for the ideal gas law is PV equals nRT, pressure times volume equals moles times the gas constant times temperature with 
R being 0 0.08 T1 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. All right. So our goal with this problem is to essentially rearrange this equation so that we get the variable we're looking for by itself on one side. In this case, it'll be the N, the moles. And so, by so rearranging it algebraically, we get N equals PV over RT. Of course, getting that from dividing both sides by RT here. And of course, at this point, it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers you have with units. So, you have the pressure, which is 2.40 atmospheres times the volume, which was 7.00 liters. And then divide all that by the gas constant, 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin, and of course the temperature in Kelvins, which was 500 Kelvins. Now notice I left in the units, those are important because all the extra units will cancel out and you only be left with the unit that you're concerned with, so we'll just take care of that now. Atmospheres on top, on bottom, those go away, liters go away, and kelvins go away, because technically here you have a kelvin on top and on bottom, so those go away, which just leaves you with moles. And so, doing the calculation, we get, let's see, 4 times 7 uh, divided by 0 0.0821. So, our number of moles overall is going to be 0.41 moles. And you can check that by punching it in on your calculator. So, that's essentially all there is to solving an ideal gas law problem.